Good morning, Carl Bogar here for Kenosha Military Surplus for this week's edition of What's New in the Store. Well, as you can see, I don't have a lot, but I have some cool stuff. Uh, picked up two new helmets. We have a brand new condition ACH. We sold out of all the other ones we had, so I picked up another one. This one has the rhino mount, and it's an extra large. Also picked up another British Mark VI helmet. Um, this one was made 87-88, um, so early one. Now normally toys aren't our thing because we're a surplus store, but I had come in with a set of stuff, a Daisy Model 8 little airsoft gun, um, or soft air gun as they called it back then pre-barcode, so we're talking uh, 60s, 70s, early 80s. But what's cool about this is you take the little BBs, you put them in the cartridges, stick them in the metal magazine, and then it actually the, the, the knuckle um, actually works. So basically you shoot it, and it shoots the little BB down range, ejects the shell, and then you push the knuckle back down, chambers the next round, you shoot it again. Um, so it's kind of a old, cute, kind of military thing. Picked up an East German Meskkin. A set of binoculars that are IMAA 6x30s, um, pre-World War II binoculars with the strap. Picked up two more sets of pilot's gloves. Airsoft is like using the pilot's gloves because, you know, for the same reason we did when I was in the military. Um, some knives. This first one here is actually from a canteen or like a USO show. I'm assuming based on its shape, it was for spreading butter. But it's nice, it says canteen on the back side of it. Um, this was a made in 1911, 1905 bayonet, but it was cut down to seven inches to make it a fighting knife. Um, also has a cut across the front here, assuming they were thinking maybe to like try to cut wire or something. Um, Springfield Armory. They also shaved down the wood right up here along the top on both sides uh, to make it a little bit nicer to hold in the hand. A Chinese short little sword with a brass handle. The gentleman who I got this from indicates a former Marine, fellow Marine, indicates he was uh, stationed up in Kandina in the 60s and bought this from a little Mama San's little shop um, up by Kadena Air Base in Okinawa. Um, K bar on one side, USMC on the other, a fatter handle, original scabbard. Um, exactly when it was made, don't know, but supposedly the story goes, um, was found in a cave in Okinawa and then the lady bought it, um, brought it to her store and then she sold it to a Marine who was stationed there um, in the 60s. One of the items I had posted on our Facebook page was this little funny little hatchet, if you will. Um, has USMC on it um, for why I grabbed it. It was something I hadn't seen before, so I was curious. Um, the USMC, after research, stands for United Shoe Manufacturing Company, um, created in 1905. A whole bunch of different shoe companies came together to make one bigger shoe company. Um, and then they used this logo roughly to 1960. What this is, it's a shaving little hatchet. You can chop the leather, you can shave um, for cobblers working and making, repairing shoes. So, cool piece. Um, Decided to put it out in the store, so if you're looking for a cool little tiny hatchet, you want to do some whittling or woodworking, it might be good for you. Uh, picked up eight World War I letters.
from Chicago, like 1918, 1918, all appear to have 1918 dates. Um, but they're just the, the letters, like the outer envelopes. That letter isn't there. It's just the outer envelope stamped from World War I. Got eight of them. Picked up a couple more pilot's helmet bags. Um, nice insulated bags. Good for a lot of different purposes. Um, one item that I forgot to bring up. Picked up a really nice condition Vietnam era, era Ertl poncho liner, center seam, um, early, so early that it has that really short, like DSA 100 dash, um, four other digits. It doesn't show you the date at all in the contract code or on the label. So we're talking like 63, 64 ish, um, the 66, I don't know exactly when the poncho liner first came out. I know nylon gear was introduced in 67, but by 67, things were um, commonly dated. You know, usually things that are like 63, 64, 65 are not. So I'm assuming um, it's in that range. Um, one of the things we talked, didn't bring up last week that I really wanted to is that we have tons and tons of patches. like. This whole entire bag is just World War II uh, Navy rates that no longer exist. Um, we also have, you know, this whole looking for a place to put out, you know, if you collect the World War II patches for the honor units, but you're, you know, the, the single reef for first award are hard to find. Uh, we have the twos, the threes, and a couple of the fours. Um, we have some British made patches, early ROTC patches, um, Armor Corps patches, airborne patches. We also have, uh, for people who are still in, we have a whole bunch of the sew on, you know, like the EIB, Expert Infantry Men's Badge, sew on for the ACU uniform, or excuse me, not the ACU, the um, OCP or the new scorpion pattern. You're a pathfinder, you need a sew on patch. We have airborne tabs, um, senior paratrooper, special forces, the, the CAB for combat army veterans who are not infantry, you know, drill instructor badge, so on, um, all kinds, recruiters. Rank, Major, the, the CIB. So, you know, some of them are out on the floor. These rigor are a little bit more rare. Enlisted air wing or air, air crewmen. Um, so why they're not out? Because we don't have as much call for them and they're not as common, but we do have them. Um, like I said, I stopped counting at 500 patches. We have an entire section that's just all the World War II infantry corps and divisions in order. Um, if you go through them, I mix the World War II ones up with the, the more modern ones. So you know, as I get them, I just price them and put them on the hook. So if you dig through them, you could find some greenbacks in there, what have you. Um, average price of a patch is $5. Obviously, some are a little bit more than that. I think the most expensive patches we have out are like 20. But for younger collectors who want a sense of accomplishment, most of us start out with patches. And there are patches there that could be worth, um, I've seen patches like the bottom half of an airborne patch uh, with a green border, green back. Once sold, I watched it sell for over $500. So, um, there's could be money in patches if you find variants, um, like a lot of the 101st Airborne patches, some of them have different colored tongues or the eagle looks different. So it's, it's a way for younger kids to start collecting on something that's colorful, has a lot of history there. They can do research on the different divisions and their history, especially in World War II. Um, but you, and you can get them a lot of different patches without spending a lot of money. So it's a nice place to start, I know, some friends of mine are still avid patch collectors. Um, normally when I buy a, collect, uh, a 
collection that has a lot of patches in it, I give them first rights of, of rating the books. And um, they found some really cool patches. So if you like patches, we have a lot of patches. I'd like to have less patches. So um, come on down, check out what we have. So, um, oh, I almost forgot the really cool high dollar item. For the World War II German collectors, I did pick up, it's in pristine condition, the cap badge for World War II German police. It would be on the visor cap. Um, this one has never been affixed to anything. Both the, the tabs are still there, the little pins to put it on. So, nice little piece of the history. Comes in a nice little case. Um, I found the case. I felt there was a nicer way to display it. So if you buy it, you get the case too. Uh, I, that's that's it. Oh. Again, you know, you're doing restoration. You need rank. We have a lot of Marine Corps pre-59 rank. A lot of World War II um, Army rank and sets or individual patches for shadow boxes. Basically, I have bags and bags of, of rank, and I more rank than I have space. So, well, that's it for this week. This is Carl Bogar signing off for Kenosha Military Surplus, your premier provider and only provider in the Kenosha area of authentic military surplus. We strive to have only 100% surplus. Um, Every now and then we get pieces like the, the, the BB gun were kind of cool, the rule violators, but they are cool. And I, th I think that's why um, in the 2015 we bought the store. First five years we had the store. I know seven surplus stores that have gone out of business in this area and we're thriving. So thank you for that. And as always, like us, share us on Facebook and YouTube. If you have any comments, please send me your comments. You could send them. Um, make them on the video, make them on Facebook, or you can email them to me at cbogar at hmihistory.com. The, the my email is down along the bottom of the, the video. So until next week, thank you. Have a great day.